Please choose what training you want to go through. I will explain about moving. Jelty is controlled by input from the left stick. Press the Y button to ascend. Press the A button to descend. Press RB while moving to dash. Holding down RB keeps you dashing. This is very effective to move quickly or dodge enemy attacks. Ending the explanation about moving. I will explain about normal attack. When the enemy is at long distance range, the lock-on marker turns green. It turns red when the enemy is at close range. When the target is distant, press the X button, which will fire a shot. In a close-range battle, you will initiate a slashing attack by pressing the X button. Ending the explanation about normal attack. I will explain about dash attacks. Press the X button while dashing to perform a dash attack. In a close range battle, a dash attack becomes a dash blade. In a long distance battle, you can lock on to multiple enemies by pressing the X button. You can fire a homing laser by releasing it. Using homing lasers consumes sub-gauge power. The longer you hold down the X button, the more enemies you can lock onto. If you destroy multiple enemies at once, your sub-gauge will be restored even more. Ending the explanation of the dash attack. Jelly is set up not to do that right now. I will explain about burst attacks. When Jehuti is not moving, you can change to burst mode by pressing RB. You can perform burst attacks by pressing the X button in this mode. A close range burst attack is a burst blade attack. A long distance burst attack is a burst shot. By holding down the X button, you can charge power for a burst shot. Burst attacks are very powerful and penetrate the enemy's guard. 
a burst shot consumes sub-gauge power. Ending the explanation of burst attacks. I will explain how to guard yourself. By pressing LB, Jehuti takes a guard position and can block enemy attacks. But not all attacks can be blocked. You cannot guard yourself from enemy burst attacks or grab attacks. Ending the explanation about guarding. I will explain how to switch between locked targets. When Jehuti gets close enough to an enemy, Jehuti locks on automatically. If there are multiple enemies, you can select an enemy to lock onto by pressing LT. You can switch between locked targets by using the right stick. You can deselect the target by holding down LT. Ending the explanation of switching lock targets. I will explain about the ring radar. When an enemy gets close to Jehuti, the ring radar appears. The ring radar turns green when the enemy is far away. It turns orange when the enemy gets closer. The size of the ring radar represents the distance from the enemy. When an attack from outside the screen approaches Jehuti, a red ring radar appears. In this case, the marker shows the direction and distance of the incoming attack. The closer the attacker gets, the larger the ring radar becomes. Ending the explanation of the ring radar. I will explain about Combo Smash. In a close range battle, you can perform a Combo Smash with a normal blade attack. Press the X button three times consecutively. If the fourth press is the X button, you will slash and push back the enemy. If the fourth press is the Y button, you will slash and toss up the enemy. If the fourth press is the A button, you will slash and throw down the enemy. By pushing an enemy to a wall, ceiling or floor, you can cause additional damage. Ending the explanation of Combo Smash.
I will explain about camera control. If you are not locked on, Jehuti will move in the direction of the left stick. If you release the left stick, the camera will capture Jehuti from behind. You can also change the camera angle with the right stick. When aiming at a certain spot to attack, you can move the target marker with the right stick. Ending the explanation of camera control. I will explain about grabbing objects. Jehuti can grab and use objects around it by pressing the B button. When Jehuti is grabbing an object, press the X button for a powerful close range attack with the object. When Jehuti is holding an object, press the B button again to throw it. Jehuti can guard itself with some objects from normally unguardable attacks by pressing LB. Some objects will explode on impact. The explanation of grabbing objects is complete. I will explain how to grab an enemy. By pressing the B button near an enemy, Jehuti can grab it. You can also grab a guarding enemy. When Jehuti is holding an enemy, press the X button to swing it around as a weapon. When Jehuti is holding an enemy, Press the B button again to throw him. When Jehuti is holding an enemy, press LB to guard with it. Guarding with a held enemy can block attacks that are normally unguardable. If you hold an enemy for too long, he can shake your hold off. You can paralyze an escaping enemy by bursting. Ending the explanation about grabbing enemies I will explain about the sub-weapon, Geyser. 
geyser can affect the power source of the enemy and restrict its movement for a moment. You cannot damage the enemy with geyser, but you can fight to your advantage. How strongly you press RT varies how geyser is scattered. Ending the explanation of geyser. I will explain about the sub-weapon, Gauntlet. Gauntlet stuns enemies to a distance by physical impact. Ending the explanation of Gauntlet. I will explain about the sub-weapon, Phalanx. Phalanx is a weapon that shoots rapid energy shots. Pressing RT softly spreads Phalanx widely. Pressing RT firmly concentrates it on an enemy. Ending the explanation of Phalanx. I will explain about the sub-weapon, Comet. Comet is an unguardable energy shot that homes in on the enemy. Comet chases the locked on enemy for a fixed time. It will almost always hit the enemy. How firmly you press RT determines how quickly and accurately it chases the enemy. Ending the explanation about Comet. I will explain about the sub-weapon, Decoy. Decoy makes a temporary copy of Jehuti and confuses the enemy's radar. By luring the enemy to the decoy, you have an advantage during battle. How firmly you press RT determines how long the decoy exists. Ending the explanation about decoy.
I will explain about the subweapon vector cannon. You can radiate large amounts of energy, but it takes time to charge it before use, and it uses a lot of sub-gauge power. Be careful, Jehuti must stand on the ground when you fire the vector cannon. While Jehuti is standing on the ground, hold RT to charge. You have to set the firing direction of the vector cannon manually. Use the left stick while charging. You cannot move while charging. Release RT when fully charged to fire. Ending the explanation about vector cannon. I will explain about the subweapon, Wisp. Press RT briefly to grab the distant enemy and bring it toward you. If you hold down RT, the enemy will be restrained at that point. When Wisp is restraining an enemy, you can make the enemy turn by using the left stick. Using this, you can smash the enemy into an obstacle to inflict damage. While Wisp is holding an enemy, release RT to pull and grab the enemy. Ending the explanation about Wisp. I will explain about the subweapon, Halberd. Halberd is a powerful energy attack that is unguardable. While radiating Halberd, Jehuti cannot move, but you can control the direction of Halberd with the left stick. The longer you use Halberd on an enemy, the larger the damage you'll inflict. Ending the explanation of Halberd. I will explain about the subweapon, Mummy. Select Mummy and then press RT firmly. You can recharge the energy. But to recharge the energy, you need a lot of sub-gauge power, so be careful. By pressing RT softly, the Mummy can be used as a strong shield. 
You can guard against attacks normally unguardable while using mummy. When you use the mummy as a shield, you will consume sub-gauge power. Ending the explanation of mummy. I will explain about the sub-weapon, homing missile. The homing missile is a powerful weapon with great enemy chasing capabilities. Press RT to set the homing missile and release RT to fire it. How firmly you press RT determines how many homing missiles you shoot. Ending the explanation about homing missile. I will explain about the sub-weapon, Floating Mine. The Floating Mine is a mine that you can set in the air. It does not explode when Jehuti touches it, but it explodes when an enemy touches it or it is attacked. You can lock on to a floating mine you set. Ending the explanation about the floating mine. I will explain about the sub-weapon, Zero Shift. Zero Shift enables you to move instantly. By using Zero Shift, you will be transferred right next to the enemy you lock onto. Ending the explanation about Zero Shift. Ending training.